Hey everyone, I'm like Stego Queen, love me, I know you do. And today, 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 we are going over the Adeptus Sororicus Beta Codex. So this codex came out just a few days ago. Um, I was lucky enough to get a lot of the stuff spoiled to me. Um, maybe not exactly the book, but a lot of the stuff spoiled to me. And I want to go over general tactics to make this army function efficiently. Now I know a clever warlord like yourself will be able to point out a few of the things that I don't talk about in this video. And if there are any tactics that you have thought of that I have not mentioned in this video, please comment them down in the comment section down below. <sighs> but I want to get into this because a lot of people, well a lot of you know that I am an Adept Storitas fangirl. I absolutely love the sororities, the Battle Nuns of 40k, the Melta Maidens, the Bolter continuing. The Sisters of Battle represent a very powerful force in Warhammer 40k. They are zealot sisters dedicated to the God Emperor of Mankind in almost all things. They can barely be corrupted by chaos and the ones that do are Mariel Sabathiel and her company so far that we know of. But the Adeptus Sororitas have sheer willpower on their side. Their acts of faith, their, their stoic nature when it comes to warfare, they go in and they purge in the name of the God Emperor of Mankind, and little can stand before them. They are an efficient army of the Ecclesiarchy and of the Ordo Hereticus. Now, I say end of the Ordo Hereticus because technically they're not part of the Inquisition, but they're usually seen alongside Ordo Hereticus Inquisitors. They are the... They number in the 10,000s per order, so there is currently 60,000 Sisters of Battle in the six orders, plus the dozens of other smaller orders, which still number in the probably thousands, all across the Imperium, including one dedicated to Mephiston, thinking that he is a living saint. I'm not making that up. It is in one of the books. I swear to you, I can't think of the book right now, but I'm sure somebody can and they are going to comment that as well. Now, what makes the Sisterhood cool on the battlefield? Well, aside from being normal humans in Warhammer 40k, normal being a very weird word to say when we're talking about humans in 40k, they're unaugmented in the same ways that Space Marines are augmented. They are... They have no gene manipulation, if that makes sense. Though technically almost everybody in 40k is augmented in one way, shape, or form, being that of bionics, minor implants, um, weapon MIUs, and so on and so forth, bionic eyes being one of the most common. These are augmentations, but these are more cybernetic augmentations versus physical augmentations similar to that of the Space Marines. The Sisters of Battle are a fast-moving, hard-hitting army that is a glass cannon. And we need to acknowledge that it is a glass cannon. Basically playing Dark Eldar. A close-range Dark Eldar army. Somebody will get that reference. Anyway, anyway, anyway. We are going to start looking at and going over... doing an overview of each of the different units in the Adeptus Sororitas Codex that I currently have. Due to some of the lack of models that I have, I'm not going to be talking about the Crusader too much, the Arcoflagellant too much, or the Death Cult Assassin. Technically, they're not sisters, they don't benefit from the Acts of Faith, so they're uh, kind of there. I think the Crusaders actually do benefit from the Acts of Faith, but I know Arcoflagellants don't. Um, so keep that in mind as we do this overview. So, 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 so. We're going to be talking about some of the changes from the Index to the Codex, the Beta Codex, as well as going in-depth on some of the characters and some of the battle strategies of the Adeptus Sororitas. This is a minor tactics video, after all. So starting off, we have Celestine. Now, some of the biggest changes is Celestine is a character with six wounds instead of seven, so she can get one shot by Meltaguns, which is absolutely terrible. Her Gemini are no longer characters, so they can be sniped, and they are a separate unit of elites. Uh, so being that they're not part of the squad, Celestine's healing tears is kind of a pointless ability, unless you hide these girls behind a wall and hope that your opponent doesn't hit them, where you can allocate wounds to them 
as you see fit. And you can keep allocating wounds even after Celestine has taken damage, which is a good thing, similar to that of shield drones. In fact, they are shield drones, just meant for close combat. Uh, other things that changed about them, there are only two to this squad. They don't take up an elite slot, but they do fill an elite slot if you need them for a vanguard detachment. But if you're in a vanguard detachment and you're taking, say, five elites, you can take them as well and they don't fill that role. Overall, their points are still relatively the same for the Gemini, and Celestine went down to 160, Celestine being strength 7 with 6 attacks. She also has the ability to up the invo save of all characters near her that have the Shield of Faith ability, as well as giving Imperial soldiers a 6 up invo. This is all the same stuff that she's always had. Now, the cool thing is, she gives them a plus 2, so they go to a 4 up. Then you can combine certain abilities and give these girls a 3-up. So this entire unit can have a 3-up invo save with a certain act of faith, which the name of the acts of faith I cannot remember, so I do, for, I do apologize. But first, let's get into these acts of faith. What are they, how do they work, and how do they operate? Well, to be blunt, they're pretty bad. So based on your army size, you get a certain amount of fate points or faith points. I keep calling them fate points because I'm so used to playing uh, Dark Heresy. As you guys know, I love Dark Heresy. So based on the total number of infantry you have in your army, you get a certain, a certain amount of faith points. There we go. I can talk. The average list having about seven from all of the lists that I've built, I've checked, and I have about 32 different sister battle lists, they all averaged out to about seven. That is one act of faith per turn, except for the first turn where you use two, maybe some survivability, but overall, you don't get to do acts of faith every part of the game, unfortunately. Celestine also does not grant an automatic act of faith for some reason. They took that away from her and took her away her ability to double move. So getting into the Acts of Faith a little bit more, the Acts of Faith are now with Fate points. They require a certain number on a single D6, and they act very similar to Psychic Powers, except on one D6, which makes them very, very, very unreliable, and you can only attempt one once on one unit per turn. So if I want to give them a 3-up invo, I attempt it, I fail, I can't try that same ability on, say, the Repentia, which you brought because you're an idiot. I bring them all the time because I love them. <laughs> they are bad, but I think they're cool. So with that, you don't get automatic Acts of Faith. There's some big differences. Getting into the Acts of Faith, we no longer have double move, double shoot, or double... Um, what was the other one? We do have fight twice, which is good. We do have fight twice. I do like that. Also, healing is a little bit... It's exactly the same. So we have two out of the four abilities from the previous index. The other two being the ones that you always wanted to use. So the Acts of Faith have devotional costs, ranging from three to five. That being said, we have add three, three inches to your movement, Almost completely pointless. If it was add six inches to the movement, it would be good. But it's three inches. This allows Celestine to actually keep up with your repressors, turn one, keep them in the aura ability, uh, spend a, a command point, spend a fade point to give her the three up invo, which gives them the four up invo, which keeps them alive a lot longer, especially if they're going to charge into battle. Though Celestine will not make it into combat that turn, because you're going to have to advance her for the 3 inches, then move an additional 3 inches just to get that 24... Actually, it's a little bit less than 24 inches back. It's 18 inches? No. Yeah, 18 inches. Which will keep her in the aura ability of the repressors, depending on how you pile them in. Now, we have heal a model or resurrect a unit or resurrect a model in the unit. This usually is what you want to do on your uh, Gemini or your Dominions, or maybe some special weapons from special squads. Like if you want to use Holy Trinity, you resurrect one of the weapons that you need for it. 
Overall, it's not bad. Unfortunately, it is a test on a four up, then, or it's a test on a three up, then it's a test on a four up to try to get that model back. So again, extremely unreliable, but it is what it is. There's another act of faith that grants you a four up invo save against mortal wounds. This is extremely useful depending on the where you want to throw it. I usually throw it on Celestine because she usually gets sniped with smite. Smite sniped. That that sounds weird. Or I throw it on a unit that's getting hit with uh, psychic abilities that cause mortal wounds. Devotional cost of three makes it pretty okay. Not great. Then we have probably the best one and probably the one that you're going to be using the most often. Add one to your ballistic skill of a unit. This is going to go on your retributors as well as your dominions once they are outside of their transports. And yeah, that's about it. Because these only affect infantry. Ever. Only infantry. Stupid. But anyway... Then we have Automatically Pass a Morale Test, which is a devotional cost of three. Pretty reliable. I've actually used this in-game. It is really good for keeping that one girl alive at the end of the turn, and then using the Act of Faith to resurrect another girl next to her, and then trying to fire into something. It's a really, it's a really good ability for trying to take, um, take your opponent by surprise. Then we have the Passion. Use this Act of Faith in a fight phase. You get to fight twice. Celestine's golden with this ability. Unfortunately, the coolest things in the army, the penitent engines, can't get this ability because they don't have acts of faith. They are not sisters of battle. So with that all being said, we are going to start looking into where you'd want to use these abilities and going over some of the newer units slash changed units. So we're going to start with the elites. So down here, I have Sisters Hospitaller. They're still dirt cheap at like 30 to 40 points. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're still dirt cheap. They still heal on a four up. So they're really useful, sort of, for keeping around certain girls. They're, they're there. They're, if you have an extra 40 points in an army, you toss one of these in. Not really much can be said about them. They're pretty mediocre. They always were mediocre. And yeah, they're there. Moving on, we have the Penitent Engines. Now, I know a lot of people are excited about the Zealot rule. They're like, oh my god, they get to attack twice. They always had that rule. It was on a 4-up, and it wasn't that reliable. But overall, I think it was a little bit better in the last Codex. But in this one, it's a bit better because it's automatic. And... Overall, they're pretty decent. They're still out in the open. They're still moving fairly slow at seven inches per turn. Can't use Acts of Faith. They do not benefit from the Shield of Faith ability, except if Celestine's near them for a six-up invo. They do have a five-up ignore damage, so five-up feel no pain. And their weaponry is pretty decent, but very, very short range. So you're going to be moving these guys, running these guys, turn one moving about 10 inches. The next turn, moving 17 inches, still not being in assault range, and then maybe make the assault, but your weapons, for the most part, are going to be out of range. Penitent engines look good on paper, don't perform well. Now, that being said, they are a good counter-assault unit. So if you hide these guys until, like, turn two and run them out to counter-assault something, they're extremely efficient at it. Though, any opponent that knows an assault army will go after them first and just kill them with shooting. Unless you, you know, keep them out of line of sight. Moving on from them, we have priests. Priests come in two varieties now, one being a missionary, one being a priest. Uh, the one is useless, the other one gives you plus one attack. So use the one that gives you plus one attack. Not much can be said about them. They can still take some weapon options. They're really not worth taking weapon options on them. You want to keep them dark cheap. And yeah. Again, they're just, they're just they're there. They're pretty good if you combine them with Repentia. They don't affect the Penitent Engines. They do affect... Oh wait, they don't affect Celestine anymore. She's not infantry. Um, they, they affect them. Archoflagellants, Crusaders, Death Cult Assassins. 
Imperial units around them, I think. Depending on the codex you take it from. They're pretty mediocre unless you take uh, Repentia. Repentia, in my opinion, got a lot better. Repentia can move across the battlefield fairly easily in Rhinos. Um, they have a good number to the squad of nine, which is pretty decent. I wish they had Zealot, but they don't, which is a shame. But there is an act of faith to fight twice with them. But with the limiting on their movement, they are no longer that combat efficient. At Toughness 3, out in the open with no armor save, they are going to die extremely quickly. They can get a combined total of a 4-up invo save, but it's pretty unlikely that you're going to use it on them. Um, you can make them better with a Mistress, which allows them to reroll charge distance and reroll attacks. Still kind of mediocre, she rerolls uh, her her um, Shield of Faith. Again, mediocre. In fact, these, even with all of the buffs, still not worth using. GW, if you are watching, put these guys at like six points of, no, like eight points a piece as a troop choice. They would be good. Right now, they take up an elite choice. They're pretty bad. They have four attacks a piece if you combine them with the priest and um, Order of the Bloody Chalice, Order of the Bloody Rose. They're pretty decent. But even with four attacks apiece, they're only hitting two times each. That's 18 attacks, wounding on strength eight. They're pretty good at killing most things, but overall, their lack of survivability, which is going to be a huge problem in this army, makes them kind of bad. Just really bad. Really fluffy, but really bad. Moving on from them, we have the Magifier. The Magifier is no longer an elite choice. In fact, it is an upgrade to a squad again. So instead of GW giving us some cool banner abilities like, hey, something died near us, fire again, or minus one to hit us, or any of the other cool banner abilities that every other army, Imperial Army, is getting, like the Space Marines and the Custodes and the Imperial Guard, we, we get a plus one to our Acts of Faith test. Yay! That's, a, that's an upgrade now to a squad who's going to be the first casualty you remove because you, you really... Yeah. Pretty much the Magifier is completely useless unless you combined her with the Repentia. And that's pretty much the only spot you're going to toss her. Uh, you might see her in Battle Sister squads if you're trying to do the Storm Bolter stratagem. Or not stratagem. Actually, it is a stratagem. But if you're trying to do the Bolter thing and give them plus one ballistic skill, you might see one of them in there. But again, you keep hearing the word might. More than likely, you're not going to because they're still expensive. They're still not worth it. And they were really, really, really good as a separate lead choice that had a banner on a four plus. You get to do an act of faith automatically. It was really good as that. Now it's kind of mediocre. Um, personally, I don't think it's worth taking unless you're taking a Retributor squad. So if you're taking three Retributor squads, you put one in the one squad so your opponent shoots at it. You put that squad in heavy cover while the other two squads stay a little bit out. And then you constantly give it the plus one to shooting. It's pretty decent, especially if you combine it with Holy Trinity. It can be pretty devastating if you combine those two um, stratagems and an act of faith. Again, can, probably won't because of statistics. Moving on from her, we have pretty much no other elite choices that I really feel comfortable talking about. Crusaders do get Shield of Faith, they do have a 3 up in bow, they do have a power sword, they do get a bunch of attacks, they do have a huge number, they are better than a Repentia in every single way. The Arc of Flagellants, they are better than a Repentia in every single way. They get way more attacks, and they're way more deadly. Poor Repentia, they look amazing, but they're kind of useless. It's a shame. It's a shame. I did forget to talk about the Canonesses. Canonesses are adequate. They're still the same thing. They are just buff manders from every other Space Marine Codex, except without the firepower. Well, with the firepower, without the devastating close combat, because we did lose the Blade of, I forget what it's called, the Blade of Admission or something like that. But instead, 
we got an awesome relic that I actually really, really, really like. It's the relic of, I have to check really quickly, the Book of St. Lucas um, increased the bearer's abilities by three inches. So this makes the re-rolling ones pretty decent because you get a nine inch bubble around which, as you guys know, is pretty effective, especially on Space Marine Captains. Um, but on Canon S's, you're going to sit them in the back, you're going to sit them with your Battle Sister squads, or your Repentia squad, Repentia Retributor squads, or even your Celestian squads. Which is something that I still need to bring up, the Celestian squad. It is really efficient if you're running a lot of characters. If you are running a Celestian squad, I highly suggest you actually run a Hospitaller and try to do the Act of Faith to resurrect them. Because you can hit them twice with a resurrection, keeping Celestine alive better than the two useless Gemini will. Uh, that being said, they will also keep other key characters alive, as well as having three to four... I think they have three special weapons and close combat weapons. Though putting close combat weapons on Sisters of Battle is pretty much pointless unless it's Celestine or Retributors or any of the dedicated close combat units. So I kind of say Celestians should stick with Storm Bolters and sit in the back or stick with Melty Guns and run alongside Celestine. Though they are Toughness 3 and only have a 5 up if they're near her, they're not really that good. Still, they're an efficient thing to keep Celestine alive. Again, it's about placement. You want to hide a few of them so your opponent can't shoot them while still allocating wounds to them yourself to keep Celestine alive and to keep resurrecting them. Now, with the Cannon S's, you're going to be running probably Power Axes, Power Mauls on them to give them the plus, uh, the Strength 5, AP minus 1 or 2, I can't remember, and an Inferno Pistol. Inferno Pistols are extremely efficient on them as a good counter unit. I love running Inferno Pistols on them because every time I get into close combat, I may not have this close combat weapon to deal with my opponent, but I do have an Inferno Pistol and I do have survivability. One of the other abilities that they can get in another chapter relic is a 3-up invulnerable save on a Cannon S. This is really good if you want to keep that Cannon S alive. What I usually do is I take two relics, I take the book and I take the invulnerable save. I use the invulnerable save on the one that's running up the board to try to keep up with all of the tanks and Celestine to give them the rerolls and everything and to go alongside that. Cannon S's overall are dirt cheap and pretty efficient. Moving back to Celestine really quickly because I did forget to mention something. Celestine is no longer your frontline assault HQ. I'm kind of moving her back to being a buffmander so that she can actually use her bubble to keep all of my castle alive. If you don't know what a castle is, it's when you put most of your units inside of an aura ability and fire from that point or move up from that point. Celestine is a really good center to that because if you use the abilities on her, you can grant a 4-up invo to everything around you, 3-up invo to certain key units. Moving on, we have Retributors. Retributors are pretty cool. I'm going to get the Battle Sisters last. Retributors are probably the best heavy support choice that we have. The next being the most useless tank in the game, which still is useless, but Retributors can take four heavy bolters and a storm bolter. Really efficient, really good, really good long, lane, wrong, bleh, long range, as well as good for picking off key units, weakening hordes, and dealing with certain characters if they get too close. One of the other ways that I've been running Retributors, and I've been running them really, really efficiently like this, is I've taken five Retributors, I've given them four Multimeltas since they went down in points now, a combi flamer, and five additional bolters. Now this sounds completely useless and to some asinine, which I fully agree with. This is a dumb strategy, but it's been pretty efficient for me. I, I kind of like this, and I'm, I'm going to tell you the strategy. So you use one of the new stratagems called Holy Trinity. If you get in range with a flamer, a melta, and a bolter, all of them increase damage by one. That is pretty decent if you give them the ability to um, the plus one shot, plus one um, 
Weapon skill? Not weapon skill, ballistic skill. I can talk, I swear. This way you can get out from your transport, move them, and have an Amaga fire to get the ability on a 3+, plus with um, Ibn Chalice, which is your order ability. You get plus one, so you're getting the plus one ability of the ballistic skill on a 2-up, which means you're going to be hitting on threes with all of your weapons. If there's cannon ass nearby, re-rolling ones, which is really, really good, and wounding Imperial Knights on threes with your multi melters or wounding most tanks in the game on twos with multi melters which are really, really, really effective. The only problem is you gotta be within eight inches of a target. So overall, it's pretty mediocre, but at the same time, it's kind of neat that it's there. So you do need a magnifier in that squad, plus four other bolters. It is an expensive squad at that point, and you need a repressor, because with the repressor, you can actually fire out of it, which is, as everybody knows, the repressor is the best tank in the Sister Battle Codex. In fact, it's the best Imperial tank that we have. Retributors. Guarantee you have to take them in every single list. I usually take three squads of Retributors with heavy bolters, storm bolters in each one. Though I don't like the look of the storm bolter, I like twin bolters a little bit better. So I've been modding a couple of my sisters to have twin bolters over storm bolters. That's a personal preference. There is no difference in the weapon at all. Well, the way I run it anyway. Right above them, we have Seraphim. Seraphim went from being one of the most efficient units to garbage. Um, sort of garbage. They now don't re-roll their invulnerable save, which their invulnerable save was usually 5+, plus because you kept Celsi near them. Now they kind of get a plus 1, and then they get a plus 1, and they already have a 6, so they go up to a 4-up invulnerable save if they're around Celestine, which you can make a 3-up invulnerable save. They are really good, but not if you deep strike them. I know there's a stratagem to try to sell you hand flamers. Don't take it, they are garbage. If you take hand flamers, throw out your sister army because hand flamers on these girls, completely useless. I stand by that. Infernal pistols, way better. The way I run my squad is I run them as a squad of 10 with four infernal pistols, plasma pistol, and a chain sword. I find this combo to be the best you can actually trick up the codex a little bit and take two pistols if you take um, uh, Battle Scribed. It, it isn't actually there, but it, it is one of those abilities that you could do. But anyway, that's being a little bit dirty and taking advantage of poor programming. But the normal configuration is Chainsword, Plasma Pistol, uh, seven Bolt Pistols, and two Inferno Pistols. Really good for running up with Celestine, good bodyguard unit, uh, surround her. She, they have a 4-up invo save normally. Keep a Hospitaler in the list to try to heal them. Keep a... Oh, there's another combo you can do with them. Nope, that's pretty much it. Run up, turn one, try to kill stuff. You are going to need to use the Act of Faith on them to move them an extra 3 inches. If you want to move Celestine, I, I would suggest, because the charge distance is so long for Celestine, to actually keep them using the Act of Faith. Or roll d6 for advance, roll d6 for advance. And I would honestly see the advance roll first before I decide to move them, uh, if I can. I forget if I can, so I do apologize if that is wrong. If not, just do it in the opposite order, advance Celestine or advance them um, with the Act of Faith. Then use the advanced rolls to surround Celestine while keeping her in range of your repressors to give them a 4-up invulnerable save as well, or 5-up invulnerable save as well. I still say that they are a decent choice if taken in large numbers, but they're 3, they're toughness 3, so they're pretty squishy, like everything in this army. They're out in the open, you're going to want tanks, you're going to want tanks to protect you. Moving on to fast attack, while we already talk, were talking about fast attack, Dominions, absolutely take them. They are really efficient with both Stormbolter and Meltagun. Not too much flamers, but Stormbolters and Meltaguns. Uh, if you do take a cheap squad it, with flamethrowers, running up the board is pretty efficient. They still have their Vanguard movement, so they still double their movement. You can put them into a Repressor, 
The Repressor does have six fire points. You put five of them in it and maybe one extra sister just to get that, um, just to get some survivability. Or you can run a full squad of 10. I suggest this only if you do one thing. Four bolters, one combi flamer, or four melters, one combi flamer, four additional bolters, and an amagifier. Um, this way you can use Holy Trinity, you can give them the plus one. You cannot do this if you were inside the transport, but once you get outside the transport, once the transport inevitably explodes turn two, it's still efficient to... Ah, I dropped stuff. Anyway, Dominions are a go-to. Five uh, Storm Bolters is also extremely good because of the new stratagem, Blessed Ammunition. You just have to move them up slightly up the board just to get to your opponent's deployment zone with the range of their weapons weaponry being that of 24. So an additional 6 gets you in your opponent's deployment zone on most occasions. And from that you can actually annihilate almost any troop choice that you're firing at. If you combine it with the other Act of Faith to give them plus 1 ballistic skill for the turn, it's really efficient. I would run them with Ibn Chalice. In fact, I wouldn't even bother running any other order. I would only run Ibn Chalice. Um, the other orders are very disappointing. Uh, the plus one to Act of Faith actually makes them semi-useful, and Magifiers make them semi-useful. <sighs> that being said, let's move on to other fast attacks. We have the Avenger Strike Fighter. Oh wait, we actually don't, because GW took that out of our book for some reason and then never gave it back to us. Even though my Thunder Strike Fighter is absolutely gorgeous, it is not in this army list. It is an Imperial Guard troop for some reason. I don't understand. Even though this thing was always meant to be a sister flyer and had the sister ability last edition, but I digress. Heavy support choices that I forgot to talk about. We have Exorcists, they are still useless. They're, they're still garbage. GW had one job. Make them artillery tanks. They missed. Though they did give them D6 wounds, which is pretty decent, but it doesn't make up for the lack of inconsistent firepower. Personally, what I would have done is D6 plus 2, Ordnance Weapon, because, let's face it, a Basilisk is better. In every single scenario, a whirlwind is better. In every single scenario. The only thing that these things have going for them is an invulnerable save, which you can buff with Celestine. Um, D6 shots, strength 8, AP minus 4, sounds amazing. It really isn't when it's D6 and with no rerolls, except for spending a command point to reroll the number of shots you get. Still not efficient, still pretty bad. I would probably not take them in any game. Transport tanks, aside from the Repressor, double flamethrowers, six access points, best tank in the game, can move 24 if you put Dominions in it. Um, pretty efficient, double flamethrower storm boulder is amazing. Uh, take this if you're going to take transport tanks. Um, GW, Board World doesn't sell the kit anymore. This is the one and only time that I would suggest going third party and actually getting the Repressor kit. You can get it off of Shapeways. Moving over, we have the Immolator. The Immolator is almost good, uh, in my opinion. It has a 12-inch range uh, double flamethrower, the Immolation flamethrower. Pretty decent. It's still a heavy flamethrower. It's, you're essentially a... It's... It's a... It's a Razorback with an Invo save. That, that's pretty much it. Pretty good with Dominions in it. Pretty bad with everything else in it. Um, personally, if you have repressors, take repressors. If you like the emulator, take the emulator. I personally think it's pretty terrible and I have about 10 of them. It's repressors better. Anyway, moving on, we have the Sorotas Rhino. I would actually take a Rhino over the emulator. Rhino has a transport capacity of 10, double storm bolter. Um, if I'm taking it, I'm putting these girls inside it, or I'm putting a giant blob of Battle Sisters inside it with three Storm Bolters, and the reason for that is the Blessed Ammunition trait, and I'm not putting in a Magifier with them. But, Double Storm Bolter, efficient, 
It can keep up with Celestine. It gets a 5 up in Vulnerable Safe if it's near Celestine. It's a Rhino. It's a Roadblock. It's going to be annoying for your opponent. If you are using Rhino, you just slam it into something and you hope for the best. Cool thing about the uh, Repressor, even in combat, it can fire. Uh, the girls inside can shoot out of it. Uh, it's mostly due to poorly worded ruling, but because of open top being the most broken rule so far in the game, um, well, fire points being re replaced out with fire points, this thing can actually fire pretty efficiently. Even surrounded gets nine attacks in close combat if it's charged against infantry. Um, other than that, it goes down like a typical predator. Uh, this has the most wounds, this has the next one, this, then this. For tanks, we don't really have much. Um, Sisters of Battle have always lacked long-range firepower. So, moving on, we have the Battle Sisters. I suggest taking them in units of 10 now. I'm still going to take them in units of 5, though, because I am an idiot. And I like taking them in small units. But a unit of 10 is actually pretty efficient right now because it gives you an act of faith, or a faith point. Um, so you want to just do basic Battle Sister squads, getting them with three Storm Bolters apiece, keeping them in the back, they're 45, 90, 96 points for Battle Sister Squad with three Storm Bolters and seven bol Bolters. It's, it's really efficient, you get your three extra points, and then your other girls on top of that will get you more points. Um, what I usually do with them is I camp on an objective. I don't really move them. I don't ever like advance with them. Maybe surround a character with them. I usually keep them around uh, key characters, like these girls, these girls, this girl, maybe her, if I ever decide to take her. Overall, Battle Sisters make up your basic troop toys and are extremely efficient, really low point cost, really good, good survivability, except that they're a Toughness 3 model. And with that, we have rounded out the Sister Battle Army. Overall, it's a lot of combinations that you're going to need to do and a lot of Warlord traits that you're going to need to take advantage of. So going over it, we have the 3 plus Invulnerable Safe, and we have a Warlord trait called the Brazier of Holy Fire. Uh, if you guys know the Dark Heresy game that I play, I actually carry a Brazier of Holy Fire. It's pretty cool. It doesn't do anything close to this, but it's, it's pretty good for willpower in Dark Heresy. So your Deny the Witch with friendly units within range of it, so six inches, uh, actually get a um, 2d6 to Deny the Witch. So you can throw this on a close combat cannon S that has a three up and vulnerable save. Oh wait, no you can't. She'll have a four up and vulnerable save. So you can throw this on one of the cannon S's. You can actually throw this on actually pretty much a cannon S and that's, that's really it. Uh, maybe, maybe a priest if you want. Yeah. Um, other than that, what do we have that's really worth talking about? Holy Trinity we talked about. Burning Descent, don't use. Uh, Vassal of the Emperor's Will. Use the stratagem after a successful test of faith. It's three command points to just get back. Oh, it's three command points. This act of faith used on a character affects all friendly characters. All friendly models within six inches of it. This is the one you use on Celestine. Three command points. You give her the three up and vulnerable save. It affects everybody around her, giving them three up and vulnerable save. Uh, Blessed Bolters, we talked about. Suffer not the witch to live until the end of the phase. You can reroll wound rolls against Psychers. Really good if Celestine is going into a, um, a Hive Tyrant, Swarm Lord a demon of some sort, or you using dominions to shoot them and you're out in the open, or retributors to shoot them. Because it does just affect attacks. And with that, I think that is going to be my overview. So, so now we're going to talk about a few tactics that I use on the tabletop when actually building my lists and building, um, and pretty much the first two turns of any tabletop game of Warhammer 40k. Usually the first thing I do is I look at the Warlord traits and I pick the one that I think is the most efficient. In my opinion, Ebon Chalice is the only one that's actually good, Bloody Rose being a secondary. 
So when I start my list, I started with Celestine. Granted, she's not as good as she once was, but I still like her for her buffs. Then the next thing I do is I take three Dominion squads, three Repressors, and outfit them accordingly. I usually do three squads of Melteguns because this is the most efficient use of the Repressor in my opinion. I know a lot of people say Storm Bolters are better, especially with blessed ammunition, but it also requires you to get out of your vehicle, and I don't like that. I usually rock three to four Repressors per list, depending on what I am doing. And then I go on to troop choices. I take two Cannonesses to get um, more command points. I take three squads, Battle Sisters. I'm going to take one squad at ten with three Storm Bolters, and the other two squads at five with three Storm Bolters. Then I'm going to take a Repressor to put the, squad, uh, the two squads of ten inside that Repressor. This way I get some lower drops. You know, actually getting the first turn is important. I don't bother taking the emulator as I don't see it worth its points. Uh, it is a cool tank, but with only a transport, a transport capacity less than 10, I don't think it's ideal. Now, that being said, why I put the two Battle Sister squads in there is because it's six Storm Bolters firing out of the vehicle. You can do this with other weapons as well. Uh, I used to do this with a he two heavy flamethrowers, two combi flamers, and two melty guns, which was actually a really decent combo. It worked pretty efficiently, and you can hold Trinity in it, but I digress. Um, while you're inside the transport, you really have to be careful about placement. You need to know your opponent's moves prior to your own. So when you do the Vanguard move, if you get turn 1, you want to move up the 12, and then you want to move up the 12 again, but you also want to move back just a little bit. You don't want to go to the full 12 because Celestine cannot keep up. Celestine can only move 12, then move D6, then move 3 inches. So on average, she is only moving 18 inches, which if you go 24, you'll be 6 inches out of range. So hold back by 1 inch and let Celestine get closer. This will keep your emulators alive with a 5 up and vulnerable save, as well as keeping Celestine around. Then I would suggest going in for mass infantry. Uh, one of the things that you could do is take um, Seraphim, because Seraphim can actually keep up with Celestine, and put them around her. This one, and this is assuming you get a good roll on your advance, because Celestine is going to outpace them as well. So you do want to take her to Gemini, just to throw the wounds away, so when she does get shot at, once the Retributors do get uh, repent repressors get destroyed, she is an easy target. So try to get her surrounded and then turn two, make the bomb attack. So you have two waves of actual attacking. You have the repressors with the melting guns, which are going to target one thing. They are going to target one thing and they are going to kill it. And then after that, they're going to be a nuisance for your opponent if they don't take care of them, or they're going to be devastating for infantry. More than likely, you will actually lose your repressors turn one, in your opponent's turn, which is perfectly fine and completely acceptable because they have done their job. They have distracted your opponent while your retributors in the back get into position to take out your opponent. They slow them down and then your second wave hits your opponent. So in that case, I would suggest two to three squads of Seraphim, either min squads or max squads, never really in the middle. Um, I would take two squads of ten. Uh, this way you actually have five for the elite choice. So you have Evan Chalice with them, so you Evan Chalice is going to be everywhere, pretty much, unless you're taking any type of close combat unit that isn't Celestine. And Celestine doesn't even buff from it, anyway. So, I usually do a three-wave attack. I keep Retributors in the back, Battle Sisters in the back, rubbing objectives, and then two waves hitting my opponent. I find this to be the most efficient use of the Sisters, because it forces your opponent to deal with you instead of you dealing with your opponent. You are always one step ahead of your opponent, which means that you will ultimately win the game unless they get extraordinary luck. Manipulating your opponent's movements is also very efficient with the sisters, because with the, re with the repressors, you can actually keep your opponent locked to where you want that. Now, some lists can vary, and some efficiencies can vary. I've seen a lot of people do heavy flamethrowers inside repressors and run those up, which is actually really, really, really cool in my opinion. 
um, especially if you take a comic melta and a few bolters and then a magifier, you jump out and use Holy Trinity. But anyway, <laughs> I really like Holy Trinity, if you haven't noticed. Um, I'm kind of debating building some of my builds around it and trying it out, because even if it gets that one turn in the game, I think it's worth it. Exorcist, I honestly, unless you're trying to play for fun, if you're playing for a competitive list, I would suggest Seraphim, Celestine, three Repressors filled with Dominions. That's your efficiency, and some Retributors in the back to take pot shots. Exorcists, if you're taking competitive, don't bother, they're not worth it. If you're doing a fun game, three Exorcists is always fun. Especially if you put Celestine in the middle and give him a four-up invo. I always think that that's fun, too. I've tried that a few times, it's still not efficient, but it's still really, really, really funny. That being said, the army overview that I... is... Eh, the army didn't really change too much. The Acts of Faith, yes, they are annoying now. Yes, they aren't efficient in any way, except for maybe two of them. And you're not going to be doing them every single turn, and there is no guarantee of doing any of them. And you can only do one per turn per unit. Uh, so if you're using the plus one, you can only do it to one unit per turn. Uh, personally, I'd rather see that go, that ability go away. Then I think the Acts of Faith would actually be worth taking because then I would do three Retributor Squads, three Magifiers, two up, two up, two up on every single one of them firing across the battlefield. This would make up for their lack of shooting twice, in my opinion, or they should just be able to shoot twice during the shooting phase. I never saw that as a problem. Every other army gets to do this, and I say other army because I think there's only like three or four armies that get to do this with Yanari, Orcs, um... We, we know a third. I cannot remember the third. Uh, Chaos, if they hit on sixes. Personally, I think that the Retributors should get something where if they hit on sixes, they get to roll another dice. But that's just me complaining. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, please comment in the comment section down below. While you're down there, check out the description to this video. You can follow me on all of my social media which is Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, everything, okay? I even have my Discord open to the public. We have a very open and welcoming community in there, and it is filled with a bunch of lovely people. My mod team is extremely good about keeping everything, you know, peaceful and everything, and I really enjoy my Discord. I spend a lot of time in there. And if you are super awesome, you can check out my Patreon. It goes a long way to helping out the channel as well as keeping my lights on my army's going, and my faith in the Emperor's strong. Anyway, guys, I'm Alexis the Ego Queen. I love you guys. Bye.